All right. Uh, before you guys hand them out, let me tell people what to do with what you're about to be given or offered. Um, I'm giving you some cards, and uh, what I want you to do is take a couple, at least take two. You can take three, four, five, whatever you want to. But if you don't want them after the service is over, just leave them in your seat. We'll pick them up, okay? But uh, take a couple, and, and they're coming around right now to, to offer you these. So we, uh, we're in our series, and our series is called Influence 3D. And what we've seen is, is that God influences us in three dimensions, in uh, spirit, soul, and body. He wants to touch your body. He wants to influence you there. He wants to touch your, your soul, your mind, your attitudes, the intellect, those kinds of things. He wants to touch you there. But he also wants to touch you in your spirit. That's the way he touches us entirely, and he changes our lives. And so we're made in the image and the likeness of God, and so what God wants us to do is touch people likewise in the same way. But we don't do it. We, uh, we, we, we get bogged down with their appearance or their skin colors or, or their ethnicity. Their, their social statuses, their sexual preferences, and we let that kind of stop us. We never look past that stuff, and we avoid them rather than influence them. We saw last time, too, that, that what we've done now is we've been given this ministry of reconciliation. We've, uh, we're, we're, we're called to join people back together with God. To, as it were, that word reconciliation sounds like a big old word. It's a big old you know, churchese kind of word. But, but really what it simply means is join the hand of a person with the hand, hand of God. And we use the example of a marriage in that way. That uh, if we're called to minister to a married uh, to a family, a person that we love, care about, they're having marital problems. They say, hey, will you come and mediate? Well, that's what we are. We're influencers. We're, well, we're ambassadors for them. And we go and we try to help them reconcile, even though there seems to be irreconcilable differences. We can go and we can be uh, influenced there and get them back together. That's what we are all supposed to be doing. And then we saw last time and we made a commitment that we were going to do it. Many of us did, at least. And that's that we wanted Jesus to touch us again so that we could see people the way we should. We talked about how, how these people brought this blind man in Bethesda to Jesus and, and joined his hand with the hand of Christ. And Christ led him out of, of the city by the hand. And then Jesus did a very, very strange thing. He spit on his eyes. And then he touched him. And then he asked the guy, he says, uh, can you see anything? And the guy says, well, I see people a little bit, but they look like trees moving there. They're blurry, they're fuzzy. Hmm. And you see, this is how we are. We see people not clear. We don't, we don't see them 3D. Their sexual preferences, their skin colors, their social status. What people say about them. We never look past that, and we avoid them rather than grav gravitating to them and, and using our influence. So we asked Jesus to do for us what he did for that guy. And it said that he spit. <laughs> well, he didn't spit again, but he touched him again. And so what we were asking, asking Jesus to do for us is to, if he would, to spit on us again if necessary, whatever he has to do. Touch us again so that we could see people the way that we should. And, and I think that in this season of the year, it, it's the time of the year when even the Scrooges of life are, are sensitive. The Scrooges of life, and we all know some, they become pliable a little more right now. They're more, uh, it's easier to influence them. And we all have people that we love and we care about. We would love to see them come into the kingdom of God. We'd love to see their life changes. And what it's going to require is some influence. So I'm going to tell you again today that you are an influential person. You are a person of influence. And I know that in the era in which we live, it seems like our influence is inconsequential. That we really don't have that kind of influence where the media is emphasizing the athletes and the celebrities and the politicians and making them so influential seeming. It seems like we don't have any, but we do. You do. For, for example, you parents, you, you influence people, your, your children, in such a, 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 a terrific way. I mean, I mean, think, the little boys want to be like daddies, and the little girls want to be like mommies. Uh, we, we influence them. Uh, our grandparents have influenced us. And, and last week, Judy and I were down at Lance, going to church with him down at Twelve Stone at Thanksgiving. And, and we, were, we were with him, and, and my daughter and her husband and family came to be with us too. Bonnie and Jody, Jack and Max, and, and they came, and Jack and Max wanted to sit with me in church. Now, you know, I don't know if you've got grandkids or not, but when your grandkids want to sit with you in church... You know, it's just telling, you know, I have influenced their lives. 
You school teachers. You, you influence lives of little children uh, from, from little bitty guys to, to, to the time they, they go on into life. We were in here just uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and somebody was in here talking to me, and an ex-school teacher came in. And he said he was sharing with her how she had influenced his life way back in middle school, years and years and years ago. I remember teachers that influenced me. We are people of influence, every single one of us. Some of you have only known me a short, short time, but I've already influenced you. Some of you have known me a long time and I've influenced you. We have right back there in the back in the nursery. There, there's these wonderful nursery workers, and they're back there influencing your little babies, your little, your little children, already influencing them for the things of God. The, the children's church workers are back there right now, influencing your children, leading them to Jesus Christ, teaching them about Jesus, teaching them about the Bible. Man, what an influence. We have our, we have our student leaders, and, and they, they take our, our teenagers, and they really teach them about the things of God. We, sh- we should be so thankful for these people, should we not? They, they are such a positive influence. We have life group leaders, and they open up their homes, and they do what they can to influence people. These are, these are, these are our leadership. They're, they're such an influence. In all of our lives, we influence others, but in all of our lives, people are influencing us. We are people of influence. The most influential person who ever walked on this planet one day commented about this very thought, about how we are influential. And the people to which he was speaking was a very diversified bunch uh, from all levels of life, uh, very diversified in social status, very diversified in religious beliefs. But Jesus was addressing them, and he says to them, he says, uh, he says, you are people of influence. And I want to read this to you, and it's a passage that we're all familiar with from, from the time, like I was mentioning earlier, from back in Sunday school in those days. We, 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 we remember this passage. It's in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world. You are. Take, take, take that slide down just a second. Remember when we used to sing that, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Remember that? But, but do we? I did pretty good there, didn't I? That was, that was, I think I was. <laughs> but do we? we? We know we should. But do we? All right, put it back up. He says, uh, you are, you are the light of the world. You, you, you light your world. Wherever you go, whether it's school or, or, or in the workplace or, or, or wherever that you go, you, you, you do something there. You influence it. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither, and here's where I really want to start working, neither do people light a lamp, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl or cover it is the thought here. King James Bible says basket. Other translations say blanket. But the thought is, you don't. Why would you light a light and then cover it up? This is his thought. He says, you don't do that. Instead, he says, they put it on its stand. Now, I need you to say that back to me. They put it on its stand. Would you say it? They put it. That was a little pitiful. I want you to help me a little here. You know, people listen to the tapes and watch television. They don't see you. They see me. It sounds like I'm just talking to myself. Let's say it one more time and say it like we really mean it. They put it on its stand. Say it back to me. They put it on. Yes! Yes! I like that. (laughs) They put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house or in the sphere of influence. Now, in the same way, now Jesus says, I've given you a metaphor, but here's what I'm really talking about. In the same way, let your light shine. Just as that light, I gave you that illustration of that lamp, I want you to, to, to put yourself there and be like that. In the same way, let your light shine before me, people, that they may see your good works, your good deeds, and praise your Father in heaven. See, Jesus is saying here, you are the light of the world. You can influence people for God's sake. For God's sake. You, you can influence people to come and praise God, worship God, come into the kingdom of God. You can do it because I've given you that kind of influence. You are the light of the world. Now, I want to work a little bit here with my light. <laughs> and I want, to, I want to point something out, okay? Jesus says you don't just, uh, you don't light a light. You don't light a light 
and then uh, then cover it up. And you know the the thought here in, in a couple of the translations is that you know you put it in a corner and you and you and you cover it up. He says, you know, what good is this? What good is that when you when you do that? It makes no sense. He said, no, that's not what people do. He says, what they do is they light that light and then they do something with it. What do they do with it? They put it on its stand. Now, this is a 150 bulb, 150 watt bulb. Was it a 150 bulb down here covered up? Huh? Was it? <laughs> I wasn't a musician there. That was just... just <laughs> And, 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 and is it a 150 watt bulb here? <laughs> so the wattage, the candle power of the bulb hasn't changed, right? It's the same there as here. It's uncovered. So what makes it influential? Putting it on its stand. The position, not, not, the, not the candle power, it's the same. What makes it powerful and influential is, is that it's put on its stand. Likewise, he says, you. So what I'm asking you is what is your stand? What is your lamp stand? Upon what can you position your life to give the influence to your whole sphere, your world? What is your lamp stand? You see, we have this idea, this deception, that it's the candle power. I've got I to gotta get more watts. I've got to get brighter. And then I can influence. No, no, Jesus says, right where you are, in your world, right where you are, I've got you right where I need you. Right where you are, you've got enough candle power. See, see, see maybe you're a home mom. And you say, well, my only influence is right there in my house. My only influence is with my family and my, my children, and maybe a few friends. Well, does it, shouldn't you give it just a little thought? Say, what is my stand? How can I position myself and my influence so that I can, I can really influence my sphere, my world, better? What can I do? Uh, maybe uh, maybe you're, you're in the workplace. And you, and you go to work and you have employees or, or, or an employer or, or you have people that you work with. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be good just to take a little time and processes and purposefully decide, what can I do? What can I do in that dimension to what is my stand here? How can I position myself so that I can, I can totally influence my sphere? So wouldn't it be good just to take a little time and, and think about that? Because you see, it's the stand that maximized the light's influence. It's your lampstand that's going to maximize your, your influence. I, uh, I asked if I could use this, um, this illustration that I'm about to tell you, and I was given permission. Most of you know Reuben Gasky. He's right back there. Uh, and and he, he and Carl worked together. And so we contracted with Carl to redo our, remodel our, our men's and women's facilities here in, 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 at the church. And, and so they, they, they're here. And uh, Reuben, I think, uh, uh, maybe a year or so coming to church on a regular, consistent basis. And, and Carl seemed was far from God. Uh, seemed like he wasn't interested at all in the things of God. He'd had a bad experience at a church a long time ago. And, and who hasn't, you know? But, but he had had a bad experience and really didn't seem to be interested at all. In the things of God. Well, so, you know, you would expect me to go to, to Carl and, and say, hey, uh, you know, talk to him about the things of God and try to find a door to, to, to witness to him, whatever, you know. And, and so I, I did. But here's how this rolled out. Every time I would go to Carl and say, hey, Carl, you know, and say something about the things of God, what he would say is this. He says, yeah, Reuben already told me that. He'd say, uh, He'd say, I'd go and I'd say, well, you know, we were talking about this. He said, yeah, Reuben said you said that. And, and I would, you know, and he, he had a hard time with the church. And I says, well, you know, well, I, don't, I don't know if we're like that. He said, no, Reuben says your church isn't like that. <laughs> every time I would, every, I mean, it wasn't once. It was every single time. Every time. Hey, you know, you expect me to, you know, loud, outgoing me. You would expect me, but... I didn't, you know, Reuben, I didn't, I wasn't, it was just a surprise to me. 
<laughs> so one day I came driving up in the parking lot. I'd gone somewhere. And, and Carl had taken one of our I Love My Church bumper stickers and stuck it on his van. And he pointed it out to me. He said, I said, I said, see, that's cool, man. <laughs> so a little later, you know, I got to him and I said, hey, uh, you, need to, you need to come to church and see. He says, yeah, he says, I'm planning on being there Sunday. I said, well, that's cool. So as soon as I got a chance, I ran to Reuben. I said, Reuben, I said, Carl says he's going to try to come to church with us Sunday. He says, yeah. He said, he told me him and Nancy were going to be here. <laughs> he'd, already, he'd already done it. And the next week, Nancy and Carl were here. And they sat over there and, and they responded to the... To the final call, you know, need to be closer to God. Been here just about every Sunday since, just about. <laughs> and and it's, been, it's, been, it's been an amazing thing. Now, here's my point. You see, again, you would think me, you know, I'm a pro at this, right? I, this is what I would get paid to do. You know, you think, well, you're the preacher. Yeah, well, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go there. I'll, I'll buy into that. But I didn't know Reuben had it in him. See, my point is, is that your candle power, right where God has you right now, is an influence. And whether Reuben realized it or not, or whether I realized it or not, or whether Carl realized it or not, Reuben was influencing his friend. And now, he's in the kingdom of God. See, we all have this influence. We all are able to do this. <laughs> we all are able to, to impact lives. <laughs> So how many of you think that, that think of yourself as, as highly influential? How many of you think, man, I am this most influential person? Does any... Okay, let me give you an example. For example, you're, you're, you're at Walmart and you're or, or, or ShopRite or, or... I'm trying to get all the things covered here. <laughs> all the businesses. That, <laughs> uh, anyway, you're, you're wherever they have these tabloids. And you're, you're, you're standing in the aisle there and you look over there and you see the Times, you know, magazine. And it's got the... 100 most influential people in the world. How many of you grab that, that, that magazine and turn to it real fast to see where your name is? You probably don't. Because we don't see ourselves as influential. But Jesus does. And he says, you are the light of the world. <laughs> you see, what... He talked about there as covering it up. He says, you don't light a light and then cover it up. That's not what you do. He says, he says and, 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 and his example there is really us. Is what he's saying is that don't get saved and do this. <laughs> Mess my hair up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get saved and do that. No. Find your lampstand. In every area that you go to, at home or at work or, or wherever that you go, find the lampstand. Find the place that you have the most influence. Look, we use lights. We, hit, we use them in our homes. We put them on a coffee table or an end table or, or in the ceiling. Or we have accent lights. But we put what, over the stove, wherever. But we put them where we get the most benefit out of them. And this is the thought. How can you position yourself in that world, in that sphere, where you can be the most influential? Where you can get the most, the most out of it? <laughs> Jesus said, you are the light of the world. So it warrants our spending just a little time and figuring out how we can maximize our influence. And this is something you do on purpose. And if you don't do it on purpose, you won't do it at all. You have to consciously think, what is my lampstand? And you, somebody may say, well, Delbert, it's just too dark where I am. No, 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 no. You're there because Jesus put you there. But how many know that in, you can be in a huge, huge room and turn all the lights out, be pitch dark, but light just one little light, one little, light, one little match. And that one little match is so influential to that whole room. See, the, the darker the better. The, the darker the more, the more influence that you're able to have. So, so when and where is a very good place to start thinking about how can I find my lampstand? 
no matter where I am or what I'm doing, how can I find a lampstand to position myself so that I can, I can give off the most light? Well, how about right now after church? How about, would that be a good place to start? Would that be a good time to start? Um, I've given you the cards. These little cards. Now, let me explain this to you. It's the baby changes everything. This is our Christmas uh, thing that we're going to be doing for Christmas. It's our Christmas program. If you notice on the back side, it's got a map. It's got uh, an invitation here, a little place maybe to, to write something if you want. And of course, on the inside, it's, 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 it's open. It's clear. What if you go out to lunch today to a restaurant and, and, and do you know that, that, that most servers, waiters and waitresses, don't like to work on Sunday? Do, do you know why? <laughs> because Christian people don't tip or don't tip well. What if you, see what they've done, if you go out and you don't tip, here's what you've done. Am I right? You sit there and you tell them about Jesus and, and, and talk about your church and all this stuff. They know you dressed, well, you're not, but, but most people dress like, like they've been to church, you know, and they know. And you don't leave a tip. So, but what if you found your lampstand and you took a really good tip and put it in there and left it? What, what, if, what if you did a double tip? Maybe even wrote in here, you are a very good server. I want to bless you. What if, what if you did that? Do you think that might influence that person a little bit? You, you know, they get tracks handed to them and stuck to them all the time, left in the bathrooms. Well, that's a little different. I want this track. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe you're like me. You sit at a desk hours a day and, and uh, people come by and see you or whatever. Well, this thing folds and it... It'll stand up all by itself. So what if you, uh, you know, stead that on your desk and people come in and eventually uh, it's going to be discussed. Well, is this what you're doing for church? Yeah. Hey, man, I'd love for you to come. And, and somehow in that you're going to be able to invite somebody to come and, and to influence their lives that you wouldn't normally get to. You, you're finding a lampstand. What is your lampstand? Also, we're going to have these big cards. Now, I'll have some out there next week, but, but we do this basically every year. Judy does it. She makes sure I do it. But again, it's the same, it's the same thing. A uh, 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 baby changes everything. I mean, knows that's prophetic. <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby changes everything. And, and then, of course, the invitation on the back. But on the back is a little more room. And, and what she'll do is she'll, with her handwriting, she'll just address it and maybe write a little note to somebody and stamp it and, and send it to them. And what if you did that? What if, what if you have people that, that you would really like to see come into the kingdom of God and, and, and you just were, maybe wrote on there, thank you for being my friend. It doesn't have to be religious. Don't even have to invite them. It's already done here. Thank you for being my friend. Just wanted to send you this. What if you did that? See, what you've done is you've got a lampstand and you've positioned yourself on it so that you can influence them. So many of you take the notes every week. You, you love getting the notes here. And, uh, and, 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 and many of you share them and you give them away. And, and somebody was telling me this past week that they took a lesson we did a couple of weeks ago to work with them. <laughs> and, and was talking about the, the teaching with everybody. Now, I mean, now, now that's, a, that's abnormal, right? I mean, I mean, usually if people talk about their pastor at work, it's, it's usually not good. But if, if you're talking about the notes and you're talking about the teaching and you're, and you're talking about that influence that it's had on you with them, now you've, you, you, you've got a place, you've got a lampstand, and you've positioned yourself on it so that, so that you, can, you can better shine. See, if you cover it, it's just non effective. It's the lampstand that makes the difference. What is your lampstand? At work, at home, with your friends. What is your lampstand? Um, how, about a, how about a simple smile? <laughs> uh, you, you know, uh, just, just being happy about life is a lampstand. How, how many of you know <laughs> these old grumpy, ornery, sad Christians? You ever met one? Yeah. Sure you have. 
Uh, That's really inviting, isn't it? I mean, you just really want a life like that. No, here's what they've done again. Right? You don't want any of that. You want somebody that smiles, that, that laughs. When, when I was going to college, I got my first degree in uh, business administration and, and uh, accounting. I, uh, I would work, and after classes, I would go, I would go to, to, to work at a grocery store. It was Big Apple then. I don't know what it is now. It doesn't matter. But anyway, I would go to work. And uh, my boss had a hard time with my name and, and remembering it. So he started calling me Sunshine. And uh, back then, I had blonde hair. <laughs> And he called me Sunshine. And uh, I thought, that's why. So I asked him one day, I said, why do you call me Sunshine? He said, because you're laughing all the time, because you're happy. You know, you're always, you're always laughing, you're always smiling. And everybody in the store started calling me Sunshine. I had infect, infected and influenced everybody in there. Simply because I smiled and I laughed. Uh, I have a, a grandson, is Michael Lance, Lance's oldest. And, and he is a bundle of energy. I mean, from the time he gets up until the time he doesn't want to go to bed at night, he just runs and he's just full of energy. And he makes us laugh. He's a funny kid. But anyway, (laughs) he has this saying, it's a beautiful day. No matter what's happening, rain, slow, like Terry was talking earlier, no matter what the weather is out there, Michael Lance, it's a beautiful day. Judy's oldest sister, Brenda, uh, she's got all these great nieces and nephews that she loves, she does, but she adores Michael Lance. Why? Because of his energy, because of his smile, because of his outlook on life. And she quotes Michael Lance, It's a beautiful day. (laughs) See, we influence people just with our attitudes, with our smile. It becomes a lampstand. And and when when you get like that around people, what they'll do is they'll uncover you. When, When you're just happy, they'll uncover you because they're not used to that. They're not used to, to people just really being happy all the, all the time. Another thing that we can do around, around people is, is just to e- express concern about something that's happening in their lives. They're going through a sickness or they have a, a, a rebellious child. They're going through a bad time financially or they're, they're experiencing something in their family, a relative. You overheard them saying something. Well, what's wrong with just asking about that? Let that become... A lampstand. Just say, just say, hey, how, how are how you doing? How so and so doing? I have found this is that a, a quick text takes me 30 seconds maybe. I'm a little slow yet. I'm working though. A quick text or an email. Some, I mean, I've, people will, will tell me, hey, I got your text, man. I really appreciate that. Glad you were thinking about me. You see, and when we care about people like that, which is what we should do anyway, right? I mean, it's just, just, it's just doing what's right. When we care about people like we should, we're expressing the love of God. And when we express the love of God to people, I'll tell you, people cannot resist the love of God. And what they'll do is they'll uncover you. And they'll invite your influence into their lives. Maybe you can do something a little bit more. It doesn't have to be a huge, huge thing. Again, a little match in a, in a dark place when people are going through a dark time in life. Maybe they need a little financial assistance. or Maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can do something else, though. Maybe you can help them somehow, some way. If you were able just to, to bring a little bit of light into their darkness, it's a tremendous influence that we have upon their lives. We use that situation, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter who it's with, there is a lampstand. And if we'll just find that lampstand and put ourselves on that lampstand and use that lampstand, then what we can do is we can become the influences that Jesus says you are. Not that you will be, when you get enough wattage. But you are. Right where you are. I, uh, when I asked Carl and, and Reuben about using them as, their, as an example, Carl told me this. He said, let me tell you about Reuben. He said, uh, he said, Reuben is my true friend. He said, I could be in Florida, broke down, without a penny. And I could call Reuben, and Reuben would be on his way to get me. Because Reuben is my true friend. When you come into situations like that, we don't really realize the influence that we're having. You have friends. You have people that that are seeing you right now in a special way. Then recognize that influence and use that influence. Again, the smallest light in the darkest of places is so powerful. Find the lampstand. 
And then you put your light on it. And then you influence your whole sphere. God will use your influence in community services. Some of you have, a, have an interest there. When, I first, when we first began Life, LifeGate Church, um, I, I, was, I was involved in a lot in the community ministerial associations and all kinds of civic meetings and those kinds of things. And it seemed like every day of my life I was either going to a meeting for the church or a meeting for, for something. I had meetings. And, uh, it really about wore me out. And I got so involved with church, of course, that I couldn't do all the other as well. But some of you have a real desire to there. And then use that as a lampstand. You can, you can become influential in the whole area just by using that, your desire to do that as a lampstand. And you become influential. Sometimes uh, you know that you've influenced people. They've told you, I, I'm, I appreciate you so much. I, uh, a while back, you know, we did our Live to Give series, and, and I told you that, that we just call your friends or, or send them uh, something. Tell people to, this week how much you appreciate them. And I, I started sending out little text messages of thank you for being my friend. And I started getting them back. You know, they started, they started coming back. You know, thank you. Well, you, you've, you're an influence to this person. You, you've influenced, you've impacted their lives. And when this happens... When you know that you've influenced somebody, that, that they really like you, that they, that, that, that they like being around you and I like talking to you, then, then what you should do at that time is kick it up, you know? Really, really turn on the influence. Jesus was crystal clear about this. One day, the Bible tells us that Jesus was, uh, was in Jericho. He was going down Jericho Road, and he was on his way to Jerusalem. It was that week that he was going to be crucified, that Friday. And he was going down before the Sunday. Uh, it, was, it was prior to that. But anyway, he was going through, through Jericho, down Jericho Road. And, and you remember the story. His influence had, had already preceded him. Everybody, everybody knew Jesus was coming. It had, he had gotten the word. His, his light, his influence had, had already got, gone ahead of him. And the, li- the, the streets were lined up with people to see Jesus as, as he came by. And there was this guy there that really wanted to see Jesus. He, he, he wanted to see him desperately, but, but the problem was is nobody liked this guy. They didn't want him standing close to him. He was a tax collector. He was despised. Nobody wanted him around. And he was short of stature, the Bible, the Bible says. So he, he couldn't see. He couldn't stand in the back and see over. So what he said I'm going to do is I'm going to run down the street. I'm going to climb me up a tree. And I'm going to see Jesus when he comes by. Now see, he had experienced the influence of Jesus. He just wanted to see him. And so he runs down Zacchaeus. He climbs up the tree. And the Bible says Jesus comes down the street. Now all these people. But what's, what's, what's different here? Zacchaeus is the only one in a tree. Wow. And Jesus sees this. and says, whoa. Watch. Let me read it to you. Luke 19.5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down when? Immediately. Now, you know, I'm, I was thinking about that. Oh, what do you know, I'm just, well, that's cool, you know. Hey. <laughs> and just keep on walking. But that's not what Jesus did. And Jesus had his plate full. He's heading to meet his destiny. This was not on his day planner. Jesus stops. Hey. Come down immediately. When we see people up a tree especially, and we've all been there. We've all seen people up a tree and we've all been up a tree. You remember the person that got you down out of the tree. Come down, Zacchaeus. I'm going to go to your house. And I won't read the rest of the scripture, you know. Uh, but he it, it, it went, went to Zacchaeus' house. Now, that was in the Eastern culture. That was a big deal. I mean, you spent hours and hours and hours there. It was a big deal. And he sat there and he communicated with Zacchaeus and he influenced Zacchaeus' life. And again, Jesus was meeting his destiny. This was a big deal. For, for him to stop. And, and he did it immediately. So when, when we see somebody that's, that's in a, having a tough time that we've had an influence upon, we need to immediately use that opportunity and influence them towards the things of God. So let me read to you what Zacchaeus said in response to Jesus' influence. He says this, Luke 19, 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, no, nope, wrong one, 19, 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord. Now, you tell me if this is a good influence or not. Here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. Now, 
That's pretty good influence. I give half of everything I own to the poor. <laughs> and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'm just not going to give it back. I'm going to give it back four times. And Jesus said to him, that's an influence. Jesus said to him, now I know. I know something now. Today, salvation has come to this house. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Jesus looked at a, at a world that needed some influence. A broken world. Broken people of all diversities, of all kinds of ethnic groups and social statuses and skin colors, sexual preferences and addictions and problems. He says they need some influence. I came to save this. And I'm going to use any lampstand I can to touch their lives. I'll use a boat and I'll push out into the water and I'll talk to them. I'll, I'll use a fig tree. I'll use fishes and loaves. I'll use any lampstand I can. And even if I have to go to the cross, let the cross become my lampstand, I'll use it. What's your lampstand? Who do you want to see come into the kingdom this year? Then it's going to depend upon your lampstand. Find your lampstand. You're going to influence that person. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness to us, your word. Um, you know, what can you say? It's just amazing. Lord, uh, you've called us with a ministry of reconciliation to join the hand of hurting, broken world and people that we know in our sphere of influence to you. You've given us that ministry. So, Father, I pray today that each of us have heard what you're saying to us. We look around and we see the darkness in people. But, Lord, we can bring them light. So, Father, I ask you today to help us be the light. But, Lord, help us find the lampstand that causes the light to be influential, to maximize our influence. Heads bowed and your eyes closed. How many of you, like me, would recognize and realize and admit you've passed up some good lampstands because you really were avoiding the person? Um, you didn't want to be around them, their addictions or their skin color or their social status or the way they dressed, sexual preferences, whatever. You didn't take the light you are and put it on the lampstand God had given you to influence that light. But you're saying today, I want to do better. I'm going to start looking for the lampstand. In every situation that I am, I want Jesus to help me see my lampstand. And I want to get on it and I want to influence If that's you, along with me, would you raise your hand and let me pray for all of us? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I think that's just about all of us. Lord, uh, uh, Lord, I pray that we go out of here not with just another little sermon. Lord, we go out of here really wanting to find our lampstands. That we start today. If we go out to eat, Lord, we start today. We start tomorrow at our workplace. We start, Lord, and we look for the lampstand. Lord, I pray each one of us, Lord, will do that. And we'll be more influential than we've ever been. We'll maximize our influence. We'll not just ask you to give us more wattage. But we'll use the wattage you've given us to shine where you've placed us. Heads still bowed and eyes closed. Now, I know some of you just aren't where you need to be with the Lord. Now, see, God wants to take you and use you. He wants to, he wants to make you shine. He wants to come into your life so that you can be an influence. He not only wants to influence your life, but he, you know people that need Him. And you need to be closer to God so that you can be that witness. You can, you can get on that lampstand. So if that's you, and you're just saying, Lord, I'm just not where I need to be. I want to be a witness. I want you to use me and my influence to bring people that I love and that I care about into the kingdom of God. So if that's you, and you just know you're not where you need to be with the Lord. I want to be closer. If that's you. Would you raise your hand and just let me pray for you right where you're sitting? I see a hand here. Any others? Yes. 